Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, today I want to talk about what is happening not only around the world, but so many of my clients. Uh, that have been coming in it's uh, going through a lot of anxiety and I don't know if you have been going through it or not so one of the things that I love and enjoy doing is responding to emails and uh, messages that I receive and one of the things that I receive is emails about what if and how can you help me do you know that this is happening and i am struggling with something so and all of them seem to come to one thing um, self-doubt and feeling anxious is feeling lost and even um, in a funk so feeling lost in a funk having anxiety not able being not able to sleep good so one of my clients referred me to another person who is having extreme anxiety because she has not been able to conceive now she's already done three in vitros and having anxiety so one of the things about anxiety is it's a thought process and then the feeling comes in and then the body starts reacting and if you've experienced it it usually starts with palpitation the heart and I had a client who kept going to the ER thinking that he's having a heart attack and they sent him back over and over after four times of ER saying it is only a panic anxiety. So the heart palpitating, having all this, feeling pain, uh, even uh, sweating, hot flashes, um, a pain that travels all over and it's not consistent, it's not localized, and it's like it keeps one in a panic mode of what is happening so it's all thought process the worries the anxieties either from the past what happened and i can't change it or i could have should have would have or what can happen in the future i can't do this what if it doesn't work and all this creates this thought process that makes you feel anxious and then the body starts reacting making it worse sweaty palms um, even getting headaches and it's you know when we get headaches and vertigo one of the things is like there are so many thoughts that you are off balance so through hypnosis we can vocalize uh, something and that you can express when you suppress so much of your thoughts your feelings what you do is suppressing and put a lid on something that you have not expressed and when you go deep within yourself and allow all these negative thoughts that come in you think it is happening to you where anxiety is nothing coming from the outside and yet is everything from the inside so i would ask for you to start recognizing what is happening in your life I mean getting pregnant in itself unless there is a medical thing um, what else is happening in your life 
Are you stressed at work? Are you stressed at home? Are you stressed physically? And are you putting too much pressure on yourself to get pregnant? And why is it that you must get pregnant instead of allow pregnancy to happen? You know, the spirit of the baby when it comes and it decides and everything happens so naturally. Nowadays, it feels like there is nothing natural. Even natural birthing is not. Everything is like scheduled. There's an appointment for this. There's an appointment for that. And all these expectations on the body, you're asking the body to perform like the expectations, right? And I remember many, many years ago, i uh, been helping so many mommies to be um, that they could not conceive or all the, when we got to the conception and they got pregnant all the way from uh, that ease of the joy of pregnancy and going through this beautiful transition of the body changing, you know, going from this fit person to the body expanding and changing and growing and blossoming because that's what it's all about motherhood is a blossom the body is blossoming and growing to make room for the baby for this new life that is going to be within you right and until the hypnobirthing there's a whole process with this and even the birthing in itself is not the pain factor but it is expanding and contracting part of it so there is a lot of vocabulary and verbiage that needs to change and i understand there is anxiety there is doubt there is all kinds of thought process of what could and yet does not have to be negative so be aware of what is happening surrounding you within your home within your family so one of the clients uh, that came to me over 10 years ago i remember vividly that the mother-in-law the sister-in-law they and her mom they came and brought her because she was not conceiving and she was what married about six or seven months and it has not happened they brought her to me because they had heard that I can do hypnosis and I've been helping so many with not only the conception part of it uh, from so many in vitro uh, doing the IVF and not being suc uh, a success to getting pregnant after the hypnosis after a few sessions of releasing the blocks emotional blocks not so much the medical aspect wanting me to do hypnosis and finding out why she's not getting pregnant so there is that pressure and the in-laws were also living with this beautiful newly married couple and have and after having the session with her uh, I came out and I said what if you just allow her to be and not expect a baby for at least another year and it's like this does not happen during our session what she was saying is that she is so much under so much stress because first and foremost um, she felt like every time they made love they could hear it so she was so self-conscious and her body would contract that every time she would walk out they would look with the expectation did it happen to a point that she was constantly praying let it happen let it happen so I can be done with this for them to be happy with it 
So it was not about her anymore. It was not about the joy of her and her husband and intimacy and all of that, right? So all of these expectations from the outside created undisclosed, unmeasured stress on herself, her thoughts, and then her feelings. She couldn't sleep well. And it's like when she would get her period, she dreaded having her period. She dreaded knowing that, okay, she's not pregnant again. And all this does what? It affects a woman physically, mentally, emotionally to a point that the body is not responding to the joy factor but it becomes a duty and um, an expectation creates more stress, more anxiety, more duress on the body to a point that she was hurting every time she was having intimacy. So why am I saying all this? Because not only this was not happening at home, it created a discord with the family and with her newly husband. And she was not welcomed. She didn't feel welcome. She didn't feel wanted. She didn't feel as if she's a good wife. She didn't feel as if her body is doing what needs to be done. Why is this not happening? And then because of all that duress, she started self-punishment. Now, self-punishment comes when you don't think you are worthy, when you're not good enough, and this can happen at any time. So the story I was sharing it is just one tiny segment of what a woman can go through what her body goes through, and this can be a man, a woman, it doesn't matter. But when there is an expectation of giving birth, of bringing something beautiful into this world, and there is duress and stress and anxiety, uh, lack of sleep, self, self judgment, non acceptance, the body, and then punishing the body, punishing the self. It creates a very vicious cycle. It's as if she was nothing an ex except an incubator. And that's how she felt. That if unless I don't do this, I am not accepted, I am not good, I am not worthy. So why did I even get married? Did they want just a baby? Or did he love me? And because he was not helping out, she went into a destructive mode. You see, it's not only that. I think so many of us, when other people's expectations, other stressors, and you give in without realizing in this, I don't know if you have felt it or not, it's this undisclosed expectations upon you and it could be performance at a job a career having a baby having this incredible body or being in a situation and this is what i'm saying is also walking on eggshells that so many other women also feel right it's like, uh, I, I will not hurt you. I have no reason to hurt you or say anything negative if you do everything right. And that creates walking on eggshells. And that creates lack of communication and suppressing so many emotions. So why is it that somebody feels anxious? depressed, in a funk, feeling lost, 
Because so many of my clients, they come and say, I want to go back to who I was. Well, you are exactly who you were. You have not changed. I say this again, you have not changed. Let's find out what behaviors, what patterns in your life has changed that you do not feel good about yourself. It's not the person that changes. It is our feelings, our patterns, our behaviors, our habits. That is what changes. And we like to modify who we are in order to fit in or modify what we want in order to fit in. So that's what I present to you. If you are feeling anxious, going through panic and anxiety, having heart problems, hot flashes for no good reason, you can't sleep, you gain weight for no good reason, all the burdens and undisclosed expectations, you feel it. They're not saying it, but you feel it and you suppress it and you try to make it better. I want you to take a look at your life. Are you under a lot of duress? Do you feel you're lacking your own self-confidence and you, you feel lost and negative? Have you taken on behaviors and habits that you never had? Are you over drinking, eating? Are you having negative, constant negative thoughts? Those are nothing but symptoms of what is happening within. It's underestimated and not revealed. First and foremost, by yourself and understanding where is this coming from? Why am I feeling this? That's why when we evoke what is, is to bring forward what was. It's like coming and understanding what is happening. Your anxiety can be happening from everything, the outside, expectations from work, from your family members, your parents, your children, do this, take me here, do that for me. And that, those are my clients who come here. So once we evoke all that, and it can be patterns, this is why I say it's not always the inner child, but the inner self. We take a look at the inner self. So when you have this quiet moment, my client yesterday says, I'm always doing, I'm always on guard. I always have to have an answer so I am not taken by surprise. And that is why he's having such panic and anxiety. This is why I wanted to talk about it today is because we feel anxious by watching TV, the news, what's happening in the world, what's happening outside, traffic. It's that constant expectations, right? But when you are in flow, which he can't even go in flow, he says, if I am in flow, I have no control. And I am not ready to defend myself and protect myself. Why do we always have to defend and protect ourselves? Why? Because we feel we're under the gun or we have to perform. As a matter of fact, Halloween is coming. I want to take a look. I was sharing it last time. And someone told me Halloween is the best time to be anything you want 
and it's okay. Why do we have to wait for Halloween to put a mask, to wear a costume, to be who we want to be? Why can't we just be who we are? And that is my question to you. If you feel overwhelmed, unappreciated, lost, in a funk, depressed, I want you to take a look at it and evoke going back to a past and realizing I am who I am. What is changed around me? What is it that I confined or conformed to? I adapted to for someone else and I forgot me. And instead of wearing a mask, why not peel away some of the masks? Would you give yourself permission to do so? I give you permission to take some of those masks off. If it's overweighting, overweighing you, overwhelming you, or you're walking on eggshells and you forgot who you are. Peel away, take the masks off, be who you are this Halloween. That's a good start, right? You can do when you feel anxious. So one of the most prim primitive and basic human um, modalities, ways of comforting yourself. Yes, you can do mindfulness, you can do prayer, you can do a lot of things, right? If you are doing yoga, uh, breath work, all of this helps. You can even dance and shift your um, mood. You can write, all of that. But just for a moment, why don't you sit back? Let's do this together. Sit back for a moment and easily and gently roll your eyes up as if looking into the sky, into the clouds, into the ceiling, right? And just easily and gently count one, two, three, and allow your eyelids to close. Just go ahead, sit back, a nice deep breath, eyes up, and easily and gently roll your eyes and close. And as you close your eyes, swallow your saliva because that brings oxygen and vitality into your body. And very gently Become aware of where you are sitting. You can practice this either sitting, reclining, perhaps even laying down. If you listen to this at a time that it's convenient for you to lay down somewhere. The only thing I will make sure that I want you to make sure that it is not while you're driving or operating anything that it's moving. And that's my disclaimer. So as you sit back, take a nice deep breath. And as you exhale, release and let go. Swallow your saliva again. And one more time, nice deep breath. Breathing in and do it from your diaphragm instead of your chest. And gently count four, three, two, one, and exhale. One more time, eyes closed. And at this very moment, no matter where you are, sitting, reclining, Bring your arm and it's your right hand 
cross and place it upon your chest, upon your heart. And as you sit, if you can't easily just move or allow yourself to linger and realizing that no matter where you are, all thoughts, ideas, images, concepts, shapes, colors, whatever comes to your mind, nothing really matters. by your hand upon your chest. You can just tap three times. One, two, three. One, two, three. Gently, loving. Loving. You can even, with your eyes closed, hum. Hmm. Realizing that the vibration of humming creates a vibration within your throat, within your mind and heart and chest. And the tapping of your arm upon your chest, your clavicle, and your heart, reminding you that not only you are alive and your heart is beating, everything is becoming more in balance and harmony. It's the same way as a mum taps upon the back of the baby, upon her chest, when she wants to quiet the baby down and put the baby to sleep or just to calm the baby down. It creates a harmony and balance that goes to the core of your being, of who you are the essence of who you are and reminding every essence of who you are I am of a human being the child within the self the inner self and the body responds to that because it was the beginning so with your eyes closed and the humming. You quiet yourself and your body, your heart and mind down. And soon you become one. And you quiet down. And all the palpitation, the worries, the anxiety, self-doubt, all negative thoughts, they soon disappear. And you connect with your core. And as easily and gently that you become one with yourself, you give yourself permission to breathe in and out oxygen and letting go of all toxins, doubts, worries, expectations, perhaps even shame, guilt. That's right. Peel away all those labels. Peel away the masks. Just imagine that you could. Everything is happening on its own. And all you do is give yourself permission just to sit and be. Be one with your thoughts that come and go and allow them to come and go. 
Release it and let it go. Let it go into the clouds. Let it go. Instead of a drop box, which is a cloud, and saving things into the cloud, release them into the cloud. Let it go. And just for the next few moments, just for today, let it go. Just release it to the clouds and let the clouds take it away. And come to appreciate every nerve and every muscle, every organ, every tissue within your body, everything working to its perfection, everything working fully and completely in harmony and in balance, realizing that who you are is beyond this physical body of yours. Who you are is beyond every thought, every idea, every concept. Who you are is beyond everything that you feel right here, right now. And yet you are the accumulation of everything because you are. And you can do this for the next few moments or actually give yourself permission to take time and just be shut down all everything your phone your TV and for three minutes do nothing and realize doing nothing is the most profound action you can take giving your body time to heal your mind to unravel and your heart to open. smile and open your eyes at any time. You have more power within yourself than you have ever given yourself permission to realize. And yes, as a child of God and the universe, there is no one just like you, not even if you were a twin and realizing that all the fears and expectations, all doubts, all worries are nothing like waves that come from the ocean and come to surface and come to shore. And soon it will recede and you can let it go and let, let the ocean, the waves take it to the deepest of its reservoir as you feel more relaxed, cleansed, and clear in mind. If this moment of relaxation was beneficial for you, I want you to know that I have a book called Heal Thy Mind Body and you can find it at my website, healwithin.com. You can go to shop. You can find that book, purchase the book. It's also on Amazon. Or you can get any of my 12 audio recordings to guide you into a deeper state of relaxation. And you can use this in the privacy of your home and go within yourself and begin the healing within and the changes to feel better and happier and live a healthier life.
Until next week, I bid you goodbye. Open your eyes, smile, it's time. Stretch and get back to living life fully and complete. My name is Lisa. By trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress and anger management, and an action coach. I also work with so many to help them evoke what was. Embrace what is the reality, the here and now, so that we can be who we want to be with our desired goals. Hello, mon cher. Thank you for being here. As a matter of fact, if this message resonates with you or you believe somebody needs to hear this, by all means, would you please share it? And yes, subscribe and like. Until I see you next week, which will be right after Halloween, and you can share all the costumes you have worn or peeled away. I wish you a blessed week and may the universal light surround you always. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.